Welcome to the 45th Annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Awards Program. Back in 1963, the Bloomington City Council unanimously passed its first Human Relations Ordinance, at which point it became the policy of the City of Bloomington to be in support of constitutional provisions against prejudice or discrimination by reasons of race, color, creed, national origin, or ancestry. It took another nine years, but in 1972, the Bloomington Human Relations Commission was created. And in 1975, 45 years ago, the first MLK banquet was held. In 1977, we began the tradition of an award recognizing the contributions of individuals to the community. And here we are, 45 years later. Our job is not and never will be complete, but we keep working at it. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And now, please welcome our Mistress of Ceremonies, Nikita Richards, as she guides us through this year's celebration. Welcome to the 45th Annual Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Awards Luncheon. I am Nikita Richards, the City of Bloomington's Community Relations Manager and your Mistress of Ceremony. I'm so excited to be here with all of you as we celebrate this prestigious event and one of the oldest celebrations in the country in honor of Dr. King. Though this year's event is being held virtually, it will be lacking none in power, presence, and purpose. We look forward to honoring our 2021 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Award winners as we focus on the ideology and principles of the late, great Dr. King. And now, let us reflect on our outstanding adult and youth winners of the past. Mm -hmm. every voice and sing to earth that heaven ring ring with the harmonies of liberty let our rejoicing rise high as the listening sky let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing, sing, sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Oh, 
past year, in 2020, our community was impacted greatly by the loss of longtime community leader, Barb Atkins. Leader Atkins became the first African-American deputy city manager for the city of Bloomington and prior to served as its community affairs manager. In addition to these roles, she worked tirelessly for fair housing, all things civil rights, anti-racism, and the upkeep of our community as a whole. She is and will continue to be greatly missed. Please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. Coming to you now are our special guest speakers and local community leaders, Mrs. Camille Taylor, co-chair of Not In Our Town Steering Committee and Not In Our Schools, Dr. Doris Houston, assistant to the president for diversity and inclusion at Illinois State University, and Dr. Brandon Caffey, assistant principal of Normal West High School, to expound on Dr. Keene's six principles of nonviolence and how they take shape in today's society. Please welcome Mrs. Taylor, Dr. Houston, and Dr. Caffey. Good afternoon, and thank you to the Bloomington Human Relations Commission for inviting me to expound on Dr. Martin Luther King's six principles of nonviolence and with their place in our current societal climate. My self-made historian husband reminds me that history is made in the moment, so it's difficult for us to judge the people or circumstances from our current perspective when those people were living in their reality and in their moment. The difficulty is trying to see things from their reality and their time without putting our 21st century spin on it. I want to expound on what I think Dr. King would do or say in relation to some of the news headlines from 2020, but I'd like to speculate on this as if he were still alive. I don't think some people realize if Dr. King had not been assassinated in 1968, it's very possible that he would still be with us today. Dr. King is almost three years younger than my, my soon-to-be 95-year-old mother, so I can easily see his 92-year-old self reacting to current news and headlines as my mother does each day. The six principles of nonviolence appear to be written from a spiritual perspective. Even though Dr. King was a Baptist minister, the nonviolent principles were influenced by Mahatma Gandhi, who in turn was influenced by Hinduism and Jainism, which respects all religions. The pandemic and the murder of George Floyd dominated the news in 2020. Principle two seeks to win friendship and understanding, which results in an environment of redemption and reconciliation. The purpose is to create a beloved community. I think Dr. King would have taken solace in the many stories of neighbors to neighbors helping each other and honoring our healthcare workers and first responders as many communities have worked together to create that beloved community. Principle three states, nonviolence seeks to defeat injustice, not people, and that it recognizes evildoers are also victims and are not evil people. The nonviolent resistor seeks to defeat evil, not people. I think this principle is likely the hardest for many people to embrace. It is extremely difficult to separate the evil that is committed from the person, the, the evil that is committed from the person that commits it. Could you watch the policeman's knee on George Floyd's neck for what seemed like an eternity and not think of him as evil? Could you watch the children at the border 
wrapped in mylar blankets on the floor and not recognize the evil of separating children from their parents? Albeit difficult, Dr. King would say, we must try to separate the evil deeds from the evil doer. Principle five states that nonviolence chooses love instead of hate and that it resists violence of the spirit as well as the body. It is spontaneous, unmotivated, unselfish, and creative. The marches, vigils, and peaceful protests reflect principle five and obviously shared a connection from within the human spirit. I believe Dr. King would have satisfaction watching the peaceful protests of hundreds of thousands of people around the world protesting against the injustice of Mr. Floyd's murder and the insidiousness of systemic racism in our institutions. Seeing marches worldwide indicated people were choosing love over hate, and no doubt Dr. King would be pleased by that. So where do we go from here? What headlines in 2021 will embody the six principles of Dr. King? Principle six states, nonviolence believes the universe is on the side of justice and that we must have deep faith that justice will eventually win. Will the headlines of 2021 reflect people obtaining justice for many of the injustices of 2020? My hope is that all of us can collectively embrace Dr. King's principles. Principles one and four state, nonviolence is a way of life for courageous people and it is aggressive spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. Nonviolence holds that suffering can educate and transform and accept suffering without retaliation. We can use the lessons of pain and suffering and despair from 2020 to be educational and transforming. Dr. King spoke truth to power when he said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. As an educated man of God, Dr. King would want us to have faith, focus our light and trust onto science, respect facts as facts, and rely less on social media campaigns of misinformation and disinformation. Our very lives just might depend on it. Consequently, I end with a challenge for all of us to live a courageous life, to speak up and speak out, and get involved wherever your talents or gifts will benefit the most. Thank you. Good afternoon, friends. It brings me great honor to share in this celebration of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s life and legacy. I was a six-year-old child growing up on the south side of Chicago when Dr. King was killed. And although I was too young to know much about him at the time, I sensed his greatness from the reaction of my parents, my teachers, and my community. As I grew older, I learned more about Dr. King, his boldness, his courage, his humility, all of which were rooted in his lifelong walk of faith, and all of which were rooted and grounded on the six principles of nonviolent social change. I was asked to speak to you today about Dr. King's six principles of nonviolence in the context of social change and their relevance for us today. And as we take pride in the strides that we have made as a society and as a country over the past 50 years, many may still question, how can we reconcile the principles of nonviolence as we continue to experience the relentless numbers of black lives cut short by violence? George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Trayvon Martin, Tamir Rice, Sandra Bland, Michael Brown, Philando Castile, Eric Gardner, and countless others that leave us to ask, do black lives really matter? But Dr. King taught us that in spite of our collective pain and suffering, we must continue to aspire for and demand a better day. We must continue to fight for what is just and right. And in spite of our collective weariness and our temptation to give up on the promise of liberty and justice for all, 
We must continue to commit to Dr. King's principles of nonviolent social change. Dr. King describes these principles as a way of life for courageous people. For it takes courage to question the status quo. It takes courage to live a life of self-reflection and cultural humility. And it takes courage to confront the systems of oppression that were and are designed to keep some communities in poverty while rewarding others with generational wealth riches and influence. Dr. King further advises that we must use the principles of nonviolence to win friendship and gain understanding as a pathway toward redemption and reconciliation. For this is the pathway toward social justice, a widening of our net of allies to include good and just people from all walks of life who stand together, who plan together, and who insist on justice, who insist on equity, and who insist on the change that we expect for our society with unrelenting determination. Be that in the streets, be that in the boardroom, be that in the classroom. The principles of nonviolent social justice as envisioned by Dr. King urge us to defeat injustice, not people, and to transform our suffering into a source of power that educates and transforms. These principles of nonviolence in the context of social change also urge us to choose love instead of hate while believing that the universe is on the side of justice. As we reflect on these principles for today's generation, I challenge us to revisit the concept of nonviolence and the meaning of its root word, violence. For we must have a clear understanding of this terminology in order to dismantle systems of racism, xenophobia, homophobia, religious bias, and other forms of oppression that plague our communities. The term violence refers to the use of physical force to injure, abuse, damage, or destroy. But it also describes actions or words that are intended to hurt people. So in order to truly live up to Dr. King's vision of nonviolence, we must acknowledge the harms, the stereotypes, the acts of systemic violence that manifest in the form of economic exploitation that keeps mothers and fathers in a state of poverty while working without health care or a living wage. We must acknowledge the systemic harms and acts of violence perpetuated by the school to prison pipeline that over polices black and brown children, hijacking their dreams and teaching them at an early age that their talents and gifts are simply not seen and heard, only their mistakes. We must acknowledge the system of harms and acts of environmental violence inflicted on poor and working class communities that relegates its re residents to a lifetime of illness from toxins and pollutants that contribute to the very pre-existing conditions that insurance providers do not want to cover. We must acknowledge the damage and systemic acts of violence inflicted upon refugee and immigrant families as their babies are snatched from their arms without any assurance of reunification. As we think about these countless forms of systemic violence that continue to plague us as a nation and as a community, 
We need Dr. King's moral guidance more than ever. We must therefore extend Dr. King's words to the principles of systemic nonviolence. And we must hold ourselves accountable to dismantling the structures of social injustice that reside in our very own neighborhoods and in our workplaces, our companies, our banking systems, our governmental bodies, our places of worship, and in our schools. As good and just people, it is up to us to make the change we desire. No excuses needed. Dr. King and his legacy are a reminder that the principles of nonviolence are not for the faint of heart. They require redemption. They require reconciliation. And they demand true healing, a healing of the spirit and of the soul. Not just one human to another, but also the healing of self. Because an examination of self, our own biases, our own complacencies, and our own willingness to justify the pain and suffering of our neighbors is where the true healing must begin. This is the making of the beloved community as envisioned by the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. Thank you and God bless. Good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity to share some reflections on the life and legacy of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. My reflections begin on the night of April 3rd, 1968. On the eve of his assassination, Dr. King, the drum major for justice, stood in the pulpit of a crowded church in Memphis, Tennessee. And on that night, he advised those in attendance not to engage in any form of violent protest in fear that the injustices that they were facing and challenging would be ignored and the narrative would shift to the violence of the oppressed rather than the conditions that caused the oppression. It remains now, as it was also then, that whenever a marginalized oppressed people rise up and use violence and violent resistance in their quest for freedom, justice, and equality, there tends to be a lynching of the truth in American society. Violent resistance and protest also legitimizes the counter use of violence by those claiming the desire to maintain law and order. Dr. King believed that nonviolence was the way for all of us, even if it cost him his own life. Therefore, as Dr. King closed his speech that night, he expressed to the audience that like anyone else, he would like to live a long life. Longevity, he said, has its place. But Dr. King was aware that the threats of violence against him, and he had accepted the idea that an untimely death might ultimately be his fate. Knowing that he would not reach the promised land with us, Dr. King, in the same fashion that Moses passed the mission and vision to Joshua, stood in that pulpit and passed the proverbial torch to those assembled and the future generations of Joshua's to forge ahead to the promised land with courage. Courage, the first of the six nonviolent principles outlined by Dr. King, exactly five years prior to the eve of his assassination. For on April 3rd, 1963, as he sat in a Birmingham jail, Dr. King penned his infamous letter to his critics and declare that nonviolent resistance is a way of life for courageous people. Courage, he proclaimed, is actively resisting evil in the spirit, mind, and emotionally. His courage to live such a principled life in the face of scrutiny and the threat of violence draws my mind to this quote. The true measure of a man is not how he behaves in the moments of comfort and convenience but how he stands at times of controversy and challenges. So to you, my community beloved, 
and subscribers to the Kingsonian Nonviolent Principled Life. May we all find the courage to actively fight the challenges of today and transform America into the promised land, promised land that Dr. King envisioned. As we examine the American society today, we know that difficult days are still ahead, but the promised land is within our reach. A land that seeks to eliminate the violence of systemic racism. A land that seeks to end the disproportionate violence against black boys and black men because of police brutality. A land that seeks to end the violence of poverty. A land that seeks just laws and prison reform. A land that seeks equity in education. A land that seeks to defeat injustice, not people. A redemptive promised land that seeks to love and not hate. Thank you. What moving and mindful words of wisdom and reflection from our speakers. Thank you all again. The Mountaintop is a play written by American playwright Katori Hall and is a fictional depiction of Martin Luther King Jr.'s Last Night on Earth, set entirely in room 306 of the Lorraine Motel, on the eve of his assassination in 1968. Here now with us is actor Gregory D. Hicks to perform a monologue from whence he played Dr. King during the show's run in 2018. Let us welcome. Well, hello. I bet you weren't expecting to see me and hear what you do. Anyhow, I'm here. And I just want to... There's a lot of things happening on Earth, and I don't want to discourage you. I know there's a lot of things that you've seen, and a lot of things that really hurt my heart. But if you, if you could only see what I've seen, if you could only just gaze and wonder at it, if you could only see, <sighs> what is this I see before me? Could it be my wildest dream? There it is. There it is. A land where hunger is no more. A land where war is no more, a land where richness is no more, poverty is no more, color is hmm, no more. Uh, destruction is no more. Only love. Radical, fierce love. I've spent many years walking through the desert of life, met oasis after oasis, only to bend my tongue down to the waters of justice and have it disappear before my thirst is quenched. Is this just another mirage I see before me? Or is it real?
I accept. I will never walk through that blessed garden over yonder. That lush land on the far side of the moon. It is so. Oh Lord, give them strength to walk forward into Canaan. Where no matter if you live in a mansion on Madison Avenue or a housing project on MLK Boulevard, you belong in this world. Mm. Where no matter who you love, love is your inalienable rights. Where no matter the color of your skin, you can achieve anything. Because we are all children of the Nile. And we will no longer wander through the desert with willow banks. Walk towards your promised land, America. My America, my sweet America. With this baton I give to you. This baton I shall no longer carry because you are the new carriers, the new climbers of this cross. I beg you, I plead with you, I implore you, don't give in and toss it off on this here mountaintop. There is beauty to behold. America, my America in black, red, white, brown, blue, and gold. Canaan is calling. Calling for you to come. <laughs> oh, America, my America. <sighs> Your promised land is so close. And yet so far away. It is so close. And yet so far away. It is so close. This year's Youth Award recipient for the City of Bloomington is Aditi Sharma. She is a senior at Normal Community High School. Her passion to see a world of equality, peace, and love drives her work in the community. As a leader of Not In Our School and the founder of Inclusive Education Coalition, she has collaborated with her peers and adults in her community to organize social justice events, informational workshops, charity events, and curriculum reform. Aditi plans on double majoring in political science and philosophy to go on and continue working as an activist for equality. First and foremost, I would like to thank the City of Bloomington for recognizing the community work and leadership that I have been a part of. I want to also thank my family for continuously, continuously pushing me to become the best version of myself and supporting me in my fight for a more just and inclusive Bloomington normal community. I especially want to thank the adults in my life, Mary Applington, Camille Taylor, Brian Thomas, Patrick Lawler, and Stefan Robinson, who have been with me every step of the way, continuously supporting student leadership and stopping at nothing to ensure that student voices are elevated. Their guidance has uplifted and assisted me throughout my endeavors. I am so humbled and honored to be receiving this award alongside other brilliant student leaders of the Bloomington Normal community. I have firsthand witnessed the, the, the contributions of our youth, and I am beyond thankful that I was recognized. When I joined Not In Our School freshman year, I never would have dreamt of being in the position I am right now. Leading Not In Our School and building the Inclusive Education Coalition from scratch has taught me the value of hard work, perseverance, collaboration, and integrity. I aspire to continue living up to these values which align with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who worked so diligently to change our world for the better. Like him, I believe that love trumps hate and intolerance. 
Like him, I will continue combating injustice and hatred alongside members of my community to build a world of peace and equality. Our community will thrive and progress when we work together and stand up for what we believe in. It is with determination and dedication that we can accomplish our goals. Together, we will plant the seeds that one day blossom into the flowers of freedom nurtured by equity and love. Thank you once again to the City of Bloomington for recognizing me. I promise to continue upholding the values of Dr. King and never give up in my fight for a more equal world. Thank you. Jasmine Jordan is one of the Town of Normal two Youth Award recipients. She is a senior at Normal Community West High School. She is the founder and president of the Normal West Black Student Union and Student Council Vice President of Communications. She is a member of the National Honor Society, National English Honor Society, Not in Our School Steering Committee, Youth Action Board, and Youth Engaged in Philanthropy. She was the recipient of the NAACP's Harry Hightower Youth Community Service Award and the Normal West Daughters of the American Revolution Good Citizen. Jasmine plans to major in psychology and criminal justice to become a child and forensic psychologist. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jasmine Jordan. I am truly humbled and extremely grateful to be the recipient of the 2021 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Ivy Dream Award. To be considered for this esteemed award is an immense honor and a privilege, so I thank the Town of Normal Human Relations Commission for selecting me. The principle of self-determination is a concept that Dr. King and I firmly believe in. In relation to Kwanzaa means to define ourselves, name ourselves, create for ourselves, and speak for ourselves. Dr. King stated, believe in yourself and believe that you are somebody. Nobody else can do this for us. First, I want to thank God for his phenomenal power that works through me to aid others. I express my deepest gratitude to my parents as well as the rest of my family for their never-ending guidance and support. Thank you to Dr. Carla Campbell Jackson for the award and nomination as well as being an exceptional and incomparable mentor. Many thanks to the unified teachers and staff members who aided in my growth and are promoting positive change in our school district. And a special recognition to Normal's principal, Mr. Johnson, and assistant principal, Dr. Caffey, for approving the Normal's Black Student Union and allowing it to be an organization that produces change makers in the Bloomington Normal community. Finally, I owe a sincere appreciation to my courageous peers and community leaders for, who are directing us towards a better future. Congratulations to Aditi Sharma and Yvonne Shen, who also won the I Have a Dream Youth Award. As we continue the work of Dr. King, we must remember why we fight and draw from these beliefs and values the strength and knowledge to better ourselves and the lives of others. Thank you very much for attending the 45th Annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Award Ceremony. Yvonne Shen is one of the Town of Normal two Youth Award recipients. She is a senior at University High School. She serves on the Not In Our School and Bloomington Normal welcoming leadership teams within her town of Normal, Illinois, and is the president of U High Student Diversity Committee. Other interests and extracurriculars include speech and debate, playing the cello, and reading philosophy and poetry. She is committed to studying at Columbia University in the city of New York and plans to double major in political science, international relations, and neuroscience. Through her studies and advocacy, she hopes to better understand human interaction, community, and service. I'd like to begin by thanking the Town of Normal for awarding the MLK Jr. I Have a Dream Award. It's truly an honor to receive not only the award, but to have my name and work mentioned even in the vicinity of such a monumental figure. Thank you to Mary Appington and Camille Taylor at Not In Our School for their continuous wisdom, support, and joy. Thank you to the NI West Steering Committee and to Aditi Sharma and Erica Rosenberger on the leadership team for being the best people I could hope to work alongside. Thank you to the teachers at University High School for their guidance and support as I grew as an activist and person. And finally, my biggest congratulations to Jasmine Jordan and Aditi Sharma for receiving the MLK Award as well. Martin Luther King Jr., when writing about the Montgomery bus boycott, was keenly aware of the unique power of his rhetoric but he also noted that if it were not for at least 42,000 individuals who had been boycotting for over four months at the time he was writing, his name would not be as treated with as much recognition and reverence as it is today. Over 42,000 individuals boycotted without the blessing of past precedent upon them and without the comfort of knowing how history would depict them afterwards. And in Dr. King's name, 
we can hear the name of those 42,000 individuals. And in his writing, we read the narratives of thousands of individuals who dared to dream alongside him. Even though this award has highlighted a few people for their work in improving human relations, I'd like to think of us being here today as a celebration of the people in our community who have learned to see and be kind to one another. So as we stand or Zoom or YouTube here today, we are fortunate enough to consult Dr. King's legacy as we work. That does not mean our work is any less difficult or speaking up is any less extraordinary. Like Dr. King and his peers, we do not have the privilege of knowing how future generations will see us. But here, at least in this moment, I'd like to thank everyone and express my belief that someday in the future, the will of our community will be celebrated, just as Dr. King's was today. Thank you. This year's adult reward recipient for the city of Bloomington is Don Shandro. Don is co-founder and executive artistic director of the Coalescence Theater Project. The Coalescence Theater Project is a nationally award-winning theater that exists to incite our community to thoughtful action. Their mission is equity and inclusion in the exploration of identity and our place in a global community. As executive artistic director, Don is committed to presenting plays that express ideas, thoughts, and stories that are not usually heard in other local theaters to offer opportunities to underutilized performers and theater artists, and bring together an audience that reflects the diversity of the community. My thanks to the Bloomington Human Relations Commission for honoring me with this prestigious award. To be linked with the great Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. through this award and my work in the theater community makes this especially important to me, as well as unexpected and humbling. Coalescence Theater Project is, a nationally, is nationally recognized because of the work of many people. Our mission of equity and inclusion in the exploration of identity and our place in a global community comes from our commitment to develop an audience that reflects the diversity of our community. We focus on unheard stories and offer a place where the silent and underrepresented have a voice. We've accomplished this by bringing together a diverse leadership team, a diverse talent pool, and through partnerships with like-minded organizations such as Prairie Pride Coalition, BCAI, the Black Artists League, and the Crossroads Project of Illinois State University, as well as First Christian Church and the many other organizations who have invited us to perform in their spaces. Along with our individual productions, this leadership team has helped develop three new play festivals, the Black Voices Matter Festival, the Voices of Pride Festival, and the Hashtag She Persisted Festival. We are striving to make Bloomington Normal a theater cultural center for diversity. As part of this attempt, we have put together a playwright advisory board representing award-winning writers from across the country, including Ama Ofuriwa Arum, a local performance artist who's walking with my ancestors first brought us national attention. This award is a challenge to collaborate more, to network more locally, statewide, and nationally, and to continue to work towards making Central Illinois a hub for social justice theater as we continue to incite our community to thoughtful action. This year's Adult Award recipient for the Town of Normal is Dr. Crystal Shelvin. She serves her community through membership in Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, Inc. and Jack and Jill of America. She also serves as a board member for Heartland Head Start and Illinois Prairie Foundation's Women to Women Giving Circle. Dr. Shelvin is the Clinical Services Supervisor at Livingston County Special Services Unit. Dr. Shelvin's community work is focused on dismantling racism and inequities in education and mental health. Good afternoon. I'm here to accept Normal Human Relations Commission's 2021 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Award with the utmost gratitude. Thank you to Goline Lawrence for your more than kind nomination letter. I'm very honored to be recognized by the Normal Human Relations Commission. I am awed to join the list of admirable community leaders who were nominated and selected before me. 
It is my pleasure to serve this community that welcomed me with open arms as a young graduate student. Through my volunteer work, I've met so many wonderful people and want to thank them for helping to make Bloomington normal feel like home for the past 18 years. It has been a true blessing to work alongside my Delta Sigma Theta sorority sisters, my fellow Jack and Joe mothers, my Mount Pisgah Baptist Church family, and more recently, Illinois Prairie Foundation's Women and Women Giving Circle and the Heartland Head Start Board. Today, I share this award with my wildly supportive husband, Alton, and daughters, Malika and Naya, who often join me in my work. It is indeed my privilege to play a role in continuing Dr. King's legacy. Thank you again for this recognition. My goodness, let us give a round of applause for our amazing honorees who deservingly have earned the 2021 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Award as a result of their diligent work throughout our community. Thank you all for your contribution. Up next is a young woman, a high school senior at normal community high school who needs very little introduction and who is ready to remind us all to stand up. Please welcome Anaya Thompson. Hello, my name is Anaya Thompson. Today I'll be performing Stand Up by Cynthia and Rebo. I've been walking Turn to the sun. Oh, I got eyes in the back of my head. Just in case I have to run. And early in the morning, before the sun begins to shine. salvation and I'll fight with the strength that I got until I die so I'm gonna stand up take my people with me together we are going to a brand new home and I know why it's on the band might be hard to feel Stand up for truth, and lo, I will be with you, even until the end of the world. The City of Bloomington and the Town of Normal Human Relations Commissions would like to thank you for joining us in celebration of the 2021 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Awards Luncheon. It is our hope that you have enjoyed this year's ceremony that you will reflect on Dr. King's six principles of nonviolence and that you will seek out ways to apply them to your everyday lives. We look forward to you joining us next year. Until then, please be safe and well. <laughs>